Hi, in this video we're going to be learning how to install and use just to write and run tests on your code. Now uh, I want to clarify one thing, you don't need to write unit tests all the time, however if your application becomes big enough, it's better to run some tests to know for sure that the errors will um, that you get will not be from the code you tested but from something else. Um, so what we're going to be focusing mainly on uh, this video is unit tests. Unit tests are um, written to target specific functions or classes, give some input and expect some output, and then set up your code in a way that the testing framework can determine whether your code is working as you intended it to. Um, there are other types of tests, but we will get to that later. Now here's the uh, the project that we're going to test. Uh, this is a form from a, a past tutorial that I've done uh, for form validations. Um, it's just a, a, a code that validates um, input fields um, and uh, sets them to valid or invalid depending on their um, actual um, state. So let's, I'm going to link the GitHub repository for this code so that you can uh, clone it or download it and then start working from there to, um, to start writing the tests. All right, let's have a look at the code. If you've done that tutorial, by the way, if you haven't done that, the link will be in the description if you want to do the validation tutorial. I actually recommend it. It's pretty good. <laughs> okay, so um, the code is, I've refactored the code and um, I've separated a couple of concerns. So we have the index.js uh, file here and this, uh, what it only does now is that it brings the uh, DOM elements, the fields, and then it uh, attaches... Um, in on focus out event to them, which uh, just triggers the validation method. And uh, this, depending on the field name, this switch determines which validation method to use. So if it's the first name, it uses the validate name method. If it's the password, it's validate password, etc. So if that validate uh, function returns uh, true uh, from the uh, result, then we set it to valid, otherwise we set it to invalid. And then if we go to the validators themselves, so the validators use some functions to validate. So we have five main validators, name, password, confirm password, and email. Actually four, not five. And then we bring these um, utility functions from the utility uh, functions uh, file, which has some basic functions that test for, for example, um, check if only letters, checks if a value has only letters for the password or, um, uh, excuse me, for the name, and check if empty does exactly that, and is empty is a function that is used by check is empty, and this is how, um, this is what we're going to be testing. For example, if we test is empty alone, this would be a unit test to make sure that this works properly. And then if we later test check if empty, this will be technically called an integration test because it's using a couple of functions and not just one. But um, personally, I don't like that um, classification. To me, they're both unit tests, unless you're doing something more advanced, um, like UI testing and stuff like that. Otherwise, uh, uh, yeah. So we're going to be testing this file. And if you've noticed, we're using um, ES6 syntax, if you notice from the exports here or from the imports. Uh, what I've done is that I've configured um, a webpack to bundle all our code uh, from the index and any code that's used from our HTML, uh, bundle it and build it into a dist folder. And then I've configured Babel as well to um, uh, compile it to, down to ES5 for um, browser compatibility. And I've already configured as well for just um, files to be... Um, even even if we write the just tests in ES6, it will still be compiled to ES5 and run without any errors. Okay, so let's actually get started. Okay, so let me actually close everything and uh, let's open up a console and let's install just. So npm install um, dash uh, capital D to save in the dev dependency and let's do just. And now, um, by the way, you don't need to install it. You can install it just globally and just use the command. But um, I have I have it both globally and locally. But it's good practice just in case uh, any error happens. Sometimes some error happens if you write a script. And even if you have it globally, you have to install it locally as well. So let's do that anyways. Now, um, we're going to create test files for each file. And the... Um, 
the convention for test files, they have to be the same name. Well, the good practice would be to have they have to be the same name as the file that they are testing, and it will be a, a dot spec or dot test uh, extension before the JavaScript uh, extension. I personally prefer dot test because it makes more sense because it's a test. Uh, but yeah, okay. So let's start writing our first test. Now we're going to be testing the utility functions file. So let's do utility functions dot test dot js. Now um, let's bring in uh, the functions that we want to test. So let's do import. Oops, imp import and do from uh, utility functions and um, let's see what we're gonna import. Okay, so we're gonna import. We're gonna test the check if empty function and is empty and uh, set validation result for now. Maybe we'll test more later. So let's bring these. Uh, is empty and check if empty and set validation result. Okay, so let's actually write a dummy test just to to see if uh, just is configured properly. So we write our test by say, uh, using this function test, which takes three parameters, the name of the test and the function callback, which executes once the test is launched and an optional timeout if you think your test is gonna take longer than a certain period of time. Okay, so the name of this test, I'm gonna call it dummy test because it doesn't test anything just um, for demonstration. The callback function will be an arrow function and inside of here, we're, let's do, uh, let's say const result equals two times three. Now let's test that this result has the correct result. We can do this by saying expect and we give result and we use this to be function and we pass it what we expect the result to be. So in this case, of course, we expect the result to be six because two times three is six. So let's save and let me put this command line on the right and let me clear all of this and let's do let me actually make it bigger oops oops i made everything bigger i just want to make this bigger of course it bugs out let me start it again and there we go okay we need to do we we just run jest and this will go and find all the dot test or dot spec files in your directory and, and run all the tests that they have inside of them so now it found our utility functions file and it's running it and yeah this should pass and it passed uh, it took six milliseconds and then and it says the name of the test here dummy test passed brilliant okay so we can actually do multiple tests within the same um within the same test so let's do another one so const result let's say okay we can't use const because we can't reassign it okay let's do result equals um true and let's do expect result dot to be true. And um, by the way, we can run just dash dash watch, which does exactly that, watches our files. And each time we change a test file, it runs again. And it gives us access to certain uh, functions, functionalities that we can use. You can see here, if we press A, it runs all the tests again. If we press F, it runs only the ones that filled and some other cool features. So our test passed. Let's actually fail our test on purpose to see what that looks like. So expect result to be false. Of course, it's gonna, it should fail because it's not false. We've set it to true and it does fail and it gives us exactly where it failed. And what's brilliant about this is that it gives us the expected value and the received value. So it's really actually the debugging tool is really handy. Okay, let's put this back to true and let's actually start testing our own functions. Okay, let's do another test. Let's call this, I like to call it the name of the function. So let's do is empty and let's do the callback function, which uh, let's declare a result. Result equals is empty. And let's give that an empty string. And let's do expect result dot to be, or in this case, because this returns a Boolean, we can use to be truthy which expects uh, a true value. So if we save, our test should run. And now it's gonna run two tests. And there we go, they both succeed. Uh, let's try again here. 
let's do result equals is empty and let's pass it a, a white space now the thing is with this function I've set it up to compare the value with an empty string so this in reality is an empty like um, is empty but technically it's not there's a white space so um, expect result so if we were to write this code and we expect this function to return true here um, we would be wrong and this would let us know that we are wrong so if we save now and the test fails we will know that we need to fix this function and actually trim the value but we are already doing this here so let's actually test this method or this function so I'm gonna change this to a new function that we haven't used yet called to be falsy and now if I save it should succeed but now I wanna test the other function and there we go our test succeeds so let's test the check if empty check if empty we did bring it in and our callback will be let's again have a result we could declare the result outside but uh, yeah let's actually do that why not so we just do let result and then we just give it a value in here okay so our result would be um, check if empty and empty string and but this doesn't return a boolean this actually uses uh, the other the, the is empty to compare and it uses set validation result to return a, a result object and this by the way takes a value um, either true or false and if it does um, sorry set validation result it takes a valid and an error so if the valid is true it returns an object uh, with the valid tr uh, with a value of true but if the valid is false and we pass an error, it returns a valid of false and an error of whatever we passed so that we can display that on our on our front end. So this technically testing, um, well, not technically, actually testing check if empty is an integration test and not a unit test, which because we're testing a, a whole process and not just one one unit. So let's do this. So check if empty, empty string. Now this should return this, this object valid. Um, false and then we need an error and because check is empty passes the error must be must not be empty so this will be the error so our response should be this okay let's actually test if that's the case so what we do is expect result dot to be and let's actually assign this to a variable so let's do let expected result and equals this and then let's pass the result so we expect the result to be that and let's save and let's run this test but now this test I know that this test will fail I'm sorry guys I didn't do this on purpose just to fail you but just to show you this weird thing expected this and it received this I know you're thinking these are the exact same things, but this brilliant debugging will explain to you that the way that to be works is that it, it doesn't work the same when you're comparing, if you're comparing like a number or a string or what we call in JavaScript a primitive type, it's okay, it works. But if you're comparing an object type, like a, an array or a, an object or a map or anything like that, you need to use uh, to equal and it states it right here. So let's do that. So to equal, Oops, I typed EO. And if we save and run the tests again, it should succeed. And it does. So our result is like we expected it to be. Okay, let's do a couple more tests on this. Let's, um, okay, let's test. Let's do result equals check if empty. And we will give a value that's not empty. So John Doe. And now we expect the result dot again to equal and our value should be an object that has a valid value of true and no error. So if we save it runs again and as it's running I want to write another test. Check if empty and it's succeeded. 
uh, check if empty and let's give a valid value and we can test this by um, by doing a, a different a different way of testing this so what we can do is that we can do expect so this result it shouldn't have an error value because this should have a valid of true so no error key because of our code so what we can do here is we can do expect result um, sorry expect result dot error dot to be undefined um, and then it's a function and we save and it tests again and this should uh, succeed because we shouldn't have an error because um, this was valid we can test the validators actually now so let's create a new test file uh, let's call this validators validators dot test dot js and here we're gonna write new tests for validators so let's bring in some functions from validators um, let's use validate name and validate password and validate email as well okay so where are we we're here so validate name validate password um, sorry let's do validate confirm password which compares the passwords and validate email from validators okay so let's do our first test this is validate name and our callback will test it's actually let's do declare our result thing so let result and come here we do result equals validate um, name and we pass it uh, we need to pass it a name so let's do John Doe which is a valid name uh, and let's do expect um, result dot to equal and let's pass this um, what we expect we expect this to have a valid of true actually let's let's do something ridiculous so let's do a valid of true and an error of must oops must not be empty and of course this should fail so let's save and it runs all the tests again and it does fail because um, we received this without the error um, but what we can change here we can do dot oops here dot not which is the opposite means it shouldn't equal this which should succeed okay uh, one thing that we can do because we've already tested uh, utility functions a couple of times when we run our test we shouldn't always be testing everything because ta that takes some time so we can run, just actually run that file on its own so just and then give it the path for that file which is now validators and we don't need to say dot test dot js because it automatically finds it oh, and it didn't find it did i name it differently oh i made a typo validate toss okay so validators so if we run that command again let me make this bigger and it's yeah it's running the tests and it succeeds okay let's do let's do a bit more so result equals validate name and we give an empty space and now we should expect the result to equal that so let's copy this and not not it should equal this with a valid of false and it, say, it should say must not be empty and let's save let's run that command again uh, by the way we can do something like this we can write a script um, we can write a script for testing which is a default npm script and we can say just let's put a comma here and then we can just run npm test and now it will um, this will run all the files one thing by the way but with running multiple files it doesn't show you anymore the tests uh, specifically for those files so it just shows you that both files were succeed successful what we can do is we can add the flag verbose so that it will show us details 
So if we run again npm test, it should give us the uh, specific tests of each file and how they went. All right, there we go. Okay, so we get our tests. Now let's test the password, the confirm password one. So test confirm uh, password. It's actually uh, validate confirm password, but whatever. <laughs> so result equals validate confirm password. And this takes two things. Wait, did it import it again? Oh, silly me, I'm in the wrong file. <laughs> okay, let me copy this. And let's go to validators and paste that. And we need to validate, uh, this passes takes two things, two passwords. So the first password will be this. And the second password will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So they're not the same. So now we should expect the result to equal valid of false and an error of passwords must match. Now if we save and run npm test, it's going to run all the tests. And it's failed because password must be valid because the password itself is not valid because we've set um, we've set it to to have to at least contain one letter so let's add actually an a at the end here and then let's run again let's actually run on watch let's actually run just this test on watch so javascript or js slash validators dash dash watch And this should succeed, and it does. Okay, let's validate the email. Now, obviously, by this point, you get how this works. Uh, we're just kind of beating a dead horse right now. There's there's a, a lot more functions, but in my opinion, they're not that useful. There's some functions for comparing uh, arithmetic values, and like greater than and lesser than, but I feel like the use of those is not that... Um, that uh, important, but you can learn them anyways. So let's do validate uh, email, and let's pass this an invalid email, which is like uh, John, oops, John at email and without a dot com. And let's expect, um, oops, result, result uh, dot to be or to equal and should have a valid of false and it should have an error of uh, must must be a valid email address let's save and it runs again and it didn't succeed because must be a valid email address what was the result oh did i misspell something yeah, result, yeah, result like that. Okay, it runs again. And it succeeds, there we go. So uh, this is it for this video. We've learned how to write uh, unit tests and integration tests. And let me show you one thing. CD and CD just tutorial complete. Um, just if you want to learn how to do this which is a um, a UI or um, functional test which looks like magic but it's actually easy to implement to test your user interface tune into the next video where I uh, install something called puppeteer and we run some user interface videos to make sure that our user interface functions as we expect it uh, I hope you learned a lot from this video. Uh, again, thank you for watching. Uh, please share and subscribe and comment and... I mean, not share. Like, who shares coding video? Lol. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye.